What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Not For The Week Apart. The other day I was having a conversation with someone and the topic of Christians no longer being able to sin came up. So let's dive into this idea. I believe the idea comes from two main verses, 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 through 10 and 1 John chapter 5 verse 18. So let's take each verse one at a time. 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 through 10. It says, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Did you catch what John said? He said, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. He didn't say that Christians don't sin. He didn't say that Christians don't make mistakes. He didn't say that Christians are perfect and kept from sinning. Instead, John said that Christians don't make a practice of sinning. In other words, we don't dwell in our sin. We don't continue to sin without fighting the good fight. Paul asks and answers a series of questions in Romans chapter 6. The first question he asks is in verses 1 and 2. He asks the question, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Let's look at the summary of his answer in verses 6 and 7. He writes, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For who, who has died has been set free from sin. Paul asks, shall we continue to live in sin so that we can have more grace? He answers, no, of course we can't live in sin because we have been redeemed from that sin. Paul didn't say that we wouldn't be tempted or that we wouldn't give in to temptation. He said that we would no longer dwell in our sin. We would no longer continue in our old ways with no fight for change. And Paul goes on to write the same thing to the Colossians. Let's read that real quick. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 through 10. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked, when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Paul says to put to death what is earthly in you. In other words, there's sin in all of us, which is why we have temptation. Some will say that Paul assures us that we don't have sin and that we won't sin in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, where he says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. Paul promises that we will always be able to overcome temptation because we will never be tempted beyond our means. But Paul isn't saying that we won't fall into temptation. In fact, Paul writes in his letter to the Romans that if it wasn't for the law, he wouldn't know about sin. This is where we pick up our verses, Romans chapter 7, verse 13 through 25. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of flesh, sold under sin, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. 
for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. According to Paul, he himself gave in to temptation because he couldn't fight off each and every sin that plagued him. Even though God always gives us an escape, it doesn't mean that we always take that escape. In fact, look what John writes about the church. 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 10. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. According to John, if we say we have no sin, then there is no truth in us. If he was speaking to anyone other than the church, the truth wouldn't be in them anyway. And that statement would be pointless. In fact, John then even clarifies, he takes it a step further and says, if we say we have not sinned, as in previously, then we make him a liar as well. We make God a liar as well. So John puts it as past tense, if we have not sinned prior to being saved, and if we have no sin now, present, during our salvation then the truth is not in us. So, so far, it seems as though Christians not only can sin, but can freely give up their salvation by not only returning to their old ways, but just by merely saying that they don't sin or that they have never sinned. And for more on that, check out our video, Can Christians Lose Their Salvation?, which is under our Not for the Weak of Heart category. Now, on to our second verse. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, it says, We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. Now on the surface, this verse seems to support the idea that Christians cannot sin. But let's just investigate and dive a little deeper. First, let's read the two verses before this one, verses 16 and 17. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. There is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. John tells us that all wrongdoing is sin, but there are certain sins that don't lead to death, which we'll get into more in another script but according to john if we see our brother our fellow christian committing a sin that do that doesn't cost him his his salvation we should pray for him and god will forgive him but if we see our fellow christian our brother or sister in christ committing a sin that would cost them their salvation then we shouldn't pray for forgiveness on their behalf so John is saying in verse 18 that we don't continue in our sin, just as he said in the verse we read earlier, 1 John 3, 9 through 10, as well as the verses we read from Paul. Now let's dig a little deeper. The word translated as touch is the Greek word, haptitai, which means 
to start a fire, to hold on to, to bind fast, to fasten, to join. So John isn't saying that the evil one can do nothing bad to us. He's saying that the evil one cannot hold on to us or bound or bind us up. What does that mean? Jesus explained it best in in John chapter 10 verse 27 through 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Because we have been redeemed, the devil can can never take us out of the hand of our God. We are safe in the hands of our God. So John is saying that the devil cannot take us out of the hands of God. He cannot take away our salvation. Paul confirms this in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 through 14. He says, In him you also, when you heard the word of, of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. No one can remove us from the promise of salvation because we have been given the Holy Spirit as a seal until Jesus returns for us and we receive our imperishable bodies. So does this mean that we can't sin because of the Holy Spirit? No. Again, this only means that we are safe in the hands of God because no one can take us out of his hands. It doesn't mean that we can't freely give up our salvation and return to a life of sin as we read throughout this video. So then if we can freely give up our salvation and we can freely go back to a life of sin, does that mean that there is now no hope? Well, no, there's always hope. Look what look at what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Paul writes that he himself fought his, his flesh daily, not only so that he wouldn't sin, but so that he wouldn't fall back into his old self and thereby give up his salvation. Why was Paul constantly running a race and fighting a battle that he could lose? Because he knew whom he served. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in, in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Paul understood that while we were on this earth in this mortal, perishable form, we would always be able to succumb to sin. But he also understood that one day Jesus would come back and would finish the good work that he started in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 through 58 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Until we receive our imperishable body, we won't be able to overcome each and every sin. Why? Because we're still only human and we still succumb to the flesh that tries to overcome us daily. But that doesn't mean we give up and we give in to our desires. We run the race set before us so that on judgment day we might hear the words, well done my good and faithful servant, enter in so let's sum everything up for you guys 
Christians aren't immune to sin. Instead, we have been given an escape route from each temptation. The only problem is, is that we're still battling our flesh. So even, even if we don't want to sin, we still sometimes give in to sin. This is because we have not yet been given our imp- imperishable bodies, which we won't receive until the rapture. But that doesn't mean that we have no hope. If we continue to fight the good fight and run the race set before us, we can overcome more and more sin. Because we have the Holy Spirit within us and he is renewing our mind. And we have the promise of Jesus that he will finish the good work that he started in us. I hope this answered any questions you may have had about Christians and sinning. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.